That's not what I want to say. What do I want to say? What do I want to say? What do I want to say? Easter is two months away, and if you have been procrastinating with your Easter order, this video is for you. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah. I love sewing heirloom clothes for my little ones, and in today's video, I am sending all the inspiration, at least I hope, your way for Easter sewing. So if you've been procrastinating with your Easter order, Today is the day we are going to go over. I am going to show you the ins and outs of my order. A little sneak peek for things to come. So first things first, we are going to pull up Farmhouse Fabrics. If you are not familiar with Farmhouse Fabrics, welcome to my channel. <laughs> but they, I absolutely love Farmhouse Fabrics. Our customer service is incredible. And they have everything you need for not only Easter, but just garment sewing. If you want to sew a garment, whether it's a heavy, thick wool coat or Easter and everything in between, a dress for yourself, which I will be getting to this year. I will be getting back to sewing for myself this year is coming. They've got it all. So we're going to do this. And so when you're talking about Easter sewing, first you got to think, what am I going to make, right? Well, I like to put together a, um, a document and kind of like gather some inspiration here and there and whether that's old magazines of um, like creative uh, what was it Australian smocking and embroidery that was my favorite magazine from back in the day for heirloom sort of stuff or if it's the Pinterest Instagrams you know your friend whatever face machine you want to gather some inspiration it can come from a particular material maybe you have some just absolutely gorgeous buttons and you want to form the whole uh, outfit around these buttons bring your inspiration from somewhere so here is my inspiration this year so I'm, I'm thinking first of all I'm doing three dresses Henry last year I made a darling lace thing and I think that's going to be the end of heirloom sewing for Henry see sweet Henry he doesn't mind it you know like I'm not forcing him into these outfits but he doesn't love it so now that I've got four kiddos since he's not head over heels for it and my time is so limited I'm just gonna put him into some store-bought stuff and then I'm gonna make him like some little suspenders and a little bow tie that match his sister's things and it's just it is what it is and we are going to do that route and it won't be any different for him like he won't notice any difference and it'll be less work for me so with air with Audrey's dress, I so I had a dress back in the day that I did like a pink um, cotton dress and it had a decorate. Oh, first of all, do you like the merch? Right? Do you like the merch? It's a it's a cold morning here in Asheville and I just I'm wearing my sewing. It's it's so we need a you sweater and I I love it. So, anywho, on topic. <laughs> hanging on topic. So I had this dress back in the day. I absolutely adored it. I think I'm going to make another one when I start making dresses for myself. I no longer have it. I wore the thing slam out. And it was out of pink Imperial Batiste. It had these um, French knots and this cool little pattern. And I'm going to do a similar thing for Audrey, um, for Audrey this year. And so I have, so, so first I've got my dress in mind, right? I'm going to do something that's pink. Imperial Batiste, not pink, but da -ba -ba -ba, not Imperial Batiste, pink. I know it's going to be pink and I want it to be like a cotton Batiste. So with that in mind, now I've got my garment and I've got like my embellishments. I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm going to go to Farmhouse and I'm going to go to their fabrics and I'm going to go, they've got a Batiste section, but they also have an heirloom section. So the heirloom is, well, they, and they have a lawn and boil, but I believe the heirloom section is going to include like all the Batiste, all the lawns, the voils, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go there and I'm just going to look through and I'm somebody who it's kind of like a tab whore and I like I just sort of go crazy I will pull up that I will pull up this anything that catches my eye I'm not really doing the dotted Swiss for this dress so I'm gonna keep on going and I will just kind of with one thing in mind go through and that is the best use at least I have found that's the best use for my time is to go through this one thing at a time because then you're not like well, I want to do this outfit and this outfit. You don't get all the squirrels coming in at you, right? Henry. I'm 
I'm trying to do a video, sweetie. Here's a, another um, a pink batiste. There's the flannel. I'm just going through anything pink that catches my eye. I'm going to go and pull it and make it into a new tab. That's pretty. Ooh, I always, NOLA for me, I always love a good NOLA. It's, it's a tried and true for me. This Swiss muslin, they call it muslin. It's also called um, angel fabric by some. It is delicious. It is not like the muslin where you make a scrap, you know, garment and you just kind of get in and out to see how the garment comes together. It's a really delicious fabric. It's very very wispy um, the weave is very open and I've made it a number of times for baby gowns it's it's delicious um, cotton but or Pima cotton we might do that there's the um, so anything I'm just gonna pull it open and then the process for me that I like I said that I found is the best use of my time and everything is I pull up all the contenders and we are almost to the end of, I don't really want to do Imperial Batiste for this dress in particular. There's another cotton, FEMA cotton, that looks new. It's, they get new stuff in all the time. Very hard to keep up with um, all their stuff. Oh, that's so pretty. And that says new, right? That is so sweet, that color. <laughs> All right, so we're at the end of it. So now we're going to go to our tabs. Not really feeling this color for this particular one. I have used this before. It's delicious, but I'm thinking more pinky and less peachy. So we've got this one and this one, a cotton crepe. What does that mean? I'm not really sure. So that's going to be like an iffy for me. Um, that's gorgeous. It does look more on, maybe on the peachy side. That's gonna be an iffy. Love, this is a solid choice for me. Love a Swiss Nola. Love, love, love. This is gonna be not enough body for what I'm doing, so I'm gonna X that one out. Pima Cotton, I do like Pima Cotton. It has a little bit more body than what I usually care for, but I do, it's a good fabric. Um, and I might go with a Pima Cotton because it does have more, more body. Let's see. And then there's, ooh, I like this one. This is a lovely, like, very sweet, light pink. I like that a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one. So now I'm not even going to worry about quantities because I do all one step as much as possible at one time. It's the best use of, of my mind. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to add it to cart. Just the half yard that they require. Just going to add it to cart and I'm going to move on and I will do quantities all together. All right. And I'm thinking it might be fun. So I'm going to think do white French knots for the thing. I'm thinking it might be fun to do an overlay. So I'm going to go back to their fabrics and I'm going to go to, they have like a lace section. You see right here? I'm going to go to the laces. So now that I've picked my pink, I'm going to X out of all of these tabs. So I'm going to reset my tabs, all right? And I'm going to go to the lace overlay and I'm going to go, I'm thinking white. So I'm going to go to any lace overlay. I want it to have an edging border and I want it to be white. So I'm going to just, with that one thing in mind, go through, like this would be pretty, but it's not, um, it doesn't have the edging border. So I'm going to go with that one thing in mind, not listen to any of the squirrels, right? And pick something that I think would be pretty for Easter. Like, ooh, that would be pretty. That is very neat. Look at that. What is that? That's really quite cool. I need to do something with this. Hmm, okay, no squirrels, Xing out, staying focused. Ooh, I like this one. So this is a Swiss embroidered flounce. Um, Swiss embroidered flounces are gorgeous. They are often on like uh, an organdy or a voile, sometimes organza. 
most of the time I think it's organdy. So I'm gonna add this to the cart because I really like this one right here. And again, not worrying about quantities at all. And I think that's all I'm gonna need for Audrey's dress. So now I've moved on to daisies and I really like, I was scrolling through the Pinterest and I loved this caught my eye. So I am gonna take this skirt from it. The bodice for me is not, I think it's pretty, but for me in Easter, I am going to go more with this sort of idea on the um, kind of like a some sort of it's a fluid design in my mind okay right but some sort of embroidery work um, on the bodice and then I'm loving this little sleeve number with the pin tucks so I'm kind of gonna combine the three so I need a number of um, let's focus on the skirt first and I'm thinking like, let's do different fabrics for each of those panels in the skirts, kind of like different textures, and then let's do a big thing of lace and whatever. So with that in mind, we're gonna go back to, back to um, the, the farmhouse fabrics. We're gonna go to the heirloom fabrics and we're gonna think all white, okay? All white, different textures and that sort of thing. Um, I might, this is blue and pink, so ooh, so something like this I'm going to pull up. So, um, let's continue on, something like this with the white, you know, the dot of Swiss on white. This is a solid, solid choice. I think I'm going to go more on the, um, the fancy side of life this year. Um, but these, these right here are a solid choice. Uh, much more affordable than you know the fancier side of life. I have done Easter actually last year. I used this fabric, um, white background with yellow dotted dots. You know for the dotted Swiss, it's a gorgeous choice and um, yeah, love. Oh nope, that's not it. That's a different one. That's really pretty. I have used this. That um, was Henry's East, not Easter. Henry's birthday outfit last year. Lovely choice, absolutely gorgeous fabric. But I'm staying focused, white fabrics right now, textured white fabrics would be really cool. This is a lovely, I love Lily of the Valley. This is also pretty, I could use that for the hem. See what I'm saying? Ooh, that's exquisite. Pink, it says pink, I might, we might, throwing a little bit of pink in this outfit. Keep on going. These are gorgeous, these little things. I wonder if they have that in white. That would be really pretty. So I'm just going through and anything that catches my mind, one thing, ooh, here we are, right? So that would be fun for one of the panels. So I'm liking this one a lot, so I'm gonna add this to the cart to use in one of the, the panels for her skirt. I'm also liking this one a lot. So this is a dotted Swiss and you can see the dots alternate and it's on foil. And I'm gonna add that to cart. Again, not worrying about um, quantities at all. I'm also loving this dotted Swiss, just a, just a solid dotted Swiss, tiny satin stitch, white dotted Swiss on foil. Adding that to cart. And here's some Lily of the Valley and this doesn't have any border to it. It's just like a straight fabric with the embroidered Lily of the Valley on it. So I'm going to add that to cart. And then here is the fairy fabric with this little um, that I mentioned earlier. It's like the, the, the muslin, the Swiss muslin. Gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. I'm going to add that to cart. It has this lovely textured you know, embroidered bit on it. And then some organdy. Organdy is a solid choice, especially for a skirt like this that really poofs out and whatever. Organdy is gonna give that volume. It's gonna be light and whispery, but still give the volume. So I'm gonna add that to cart. And I'm gonna X out of that. And I think then we can X out of this one. X out of that one, X out of that tab. Hmm. Oh, look at that. See, I do, <laughs> I'm telling you, I love Lily of the Valley. It's one of my all time favorite prints, uh, lines, whatever. It's so fun. This was a fun thing to do. That, like, bishop 
and I used the edging like as the heat as the blah, 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 the hem of the sleeve as well as the hem do I have it photographed the hem of the bishop um, that was a fun make anywho no more squirrels let's X out of this and start fresh again so now we're gonna go back and we have our skirt fabrics I'm thinking though we need to look for a wide lace edging okay we want a wide lace edging to insert into this skirt so we're gonna go back to the farmhouse fabrics with that one thing in mind and go to laces and we're gonna go to French lace and we're gonna go to insertion lace that neat that nice little like search by and we're gonna want it to be white and Let's see, oh, and they even have widths for us. So, we're going to do something on the wider side of life. I think either of those would work. That is pretty. I really like that one. Oh, I also like that one. So I'm opening both of those tabs. This line, I love this line. I've used this a number of times, this um, kind of polka dot thing. I think though I want this to be more flowery. So let's go to Let's see which ones I have open. This one here. Um, that I think is a solid choice. As well as this one here. I actually think I might like this one better. So we're talking about an inch. And in, Does anybody else hold their hands up as they're like thinking about numbers, measurements? So, okay, an inch. Maybe that's not quite as wide as I'd like it to be versus this not as wide as I like it to be either. So let's go back and let's search for some wider ones. Ooh, this is pretty. It doesn't have the flowers on it, but I still really like it. I'm wondering. Maybe I don't need it to have the flowers on it. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Okay, let's go with this in an inch and a half. Is that wide enough? Maybe I could combine this with the flowers. So the flowers could be the big one and then I could do a 5 8 one on either side. Or you know what I could do? I could go back to this polka dot guy and maybe combine the polka dots no, let's branch out. Okay, let's do the 5 8 of this one right here. Let's add that to cart and we'll do that on either side of the flower, which I want it to be this bigger one here. So that's going to be the middle of the band. I'm just going to add both of those to cart and update my notes. I've got to keep notes because by the time, and they fill orders fast, but by the time I, I do this and I do that my back to my kids and the order comes in a lot of things get lost in the shuffle right <laughs> the hamster falls off the wheel quite a bit these days so last thing is a hem piece and I'm thinking I'm gonna go back to this lily of the valley um, and that'll tie in to do, 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 do. Ooh, actually let's do this one <laughs> So we're in the Swiss edging. This is six and a half inches wide, and it's a it's white, but it's got a slight bit of color on it, which I think is great because it'll allow me to put some color on that bodice when I do my hand embroidery and kind of tie the two together. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's add this one to cart. So much fun with Easter sewing. Heirloom, Easter sewing, it just shines in the spring springtime. Everything comes back to life. You got the Easter. Um, the spring uh, equinox and am I saying that right? Spring equinox. equinox? Anywho, last and final dress, last but certainly not least, because it is Sweet Everly's first Easter, and you just you gotta make something way classic, right? At least that's what I'm gonna do this year. It's my final baby, final final uh, first Easter sewing and I'm gonna go all classic for this one. So, I'm thinking like 
a smocked yoke that continues, like it's one piece of fabric, continues on, have a base fabric as well as an overlay. So I've got to pick a base out as well as an overlay. And this can be a great thing since I got a little bit of pink on Audrey's dress and a little bit of white on, uh, on Daisy's dress. I can kind of combine the two and do like a pink base with Everly's and a white overlay what I'm sort of thinking and then I'm also thinking since she's you know it's her first one she's still gonna be in that baby land to do a bonnet a sweet bonnet so I'm gonna go with my tried-and-true Nola right here I'm gonna do light pink and add that to cart and that'll be the base of her Easter that'll be the base of her Easter dress and then I'm thinking for the overlay to do this gorgeous. It's 27 inches wide, so it'll be plenty in length to go from the top to the hem, have it be all one continuous piece of fabric. You got something to say? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, so it'll be uh, one continuous fat, you know, enough for, for the whole thing. I can smock the two together, or pleat the two together, you know, to have it be smocked. And then, hey, and then what I'm thinking, I can go back to this. I can go back to this whole Lily of the Valley thing for her bonnet. So I'm gonna add this to cart for her bonnet. And then the bonnet needs a ribbon. And I'm thinking something fun would be a silk taffeta ribbon. It would have some more uh, volume to it than like a silk satin ribbon. Not there's anything wrong with silk satin. But I've used silk satin a number of times. Can I help you? Silk satin a number of times, but I'm thinking in this particular case, I want to do something that is um, just more structure to it. I've got helpers. And then um, I think that wraps it up. So now I'm going to go to my cart. I can go through all of these quantities. That's right. Peanut Geller has a lot to say today. Mm -hmm. So to figure out the quantities I'm going to need, I'm actually going to I use notebooks all the time. This is my first time using my, my new notebook for my merch. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to doodle and all my sort of stuff and figure out how much I need of what, especially for that skirt, I need to figure out like all my um, all my ratios, right, that I want to gather and that that's where I know how much lace that I need to do. And, all of that. I can go to all these quantities, update the quantities that I need, and check out. Don't forget any of your sewing notions. So buttons, anything you're running low on, like interfacing, any, um, I like to keep white imperial batiste on hand for lining, and I have plenty of it right now, so I'm not going to get any more. Um, any of your threads, don't forget those sort of things, right? Needles, all that goodness to make your heirloom sewing come together for Easter. Check out my video from last year for Easter. Or is it over here? Over, ah, wherever it is. Check out last year's Easter sewing for more inspiration. I hope this was a fun little sit down and sew with me thing. If you have any questions, of course, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. We'll catch y'all next time. Thanks, guys.